What do we have here? What we got here is a Sunburst guitar and Ringo signature, George Harrison signature, John Lennon signature, and an unused concert ticket. Beatles fans are insane. They will pay crazy prices for any Beatle memorabilia, especially if it was owned by one of the Fab Four. So you think this could have been one of his personal guitars, or? Absolutely. Because if it was actually one of Paul McCartney's guitars, it makes it worth a fortune. I like to hear that. I mean, just Lennon alone is something pretty cool. I know his last autograph that he ever signed before he passed away went for seventy-some thousand dollars. Awesome! <laughs> Love that. I called Jesse over to take a look at this thing. Um, I was just wondering if there's any way to tell if it was actually played by Paul. I mean, she got appraised for twenty-five thousand dollars. There's got to be a reason why. Yeah, yeah. This is the style he played. Hoffner was manufactured in Germany. Whether Paul played it or not, I would probably say that Paul has never played this. Being He's left-handed. This bass is strung right-handed. It's set up right-handed. I mean, they didn't even take the little packing felt that they put underneath the bridge off of it. Well, that was not the information I wanted to hear. But the signature still could be really valuable, so Steve's here to take a look. Wow, that's a great display. I just need to know if they're all legit. OK, guys, looking at all this, comparing my examples of what I've got here, the known stuff that's real, sorry, guys, it's not real. I see the wrong angle. I see the wrong star formation. The one that really catches my eye is Paul McCartney. Getting Paul McCartney to sign a guitar is nearly impossible. You know what? Hang it on the wall and tell people it's real. <laughs> it literally felt like I was just robbed of $12,000. I have a very, very unique piece of Beatles memorabilia. OK. These are one-of-a-kind Beatle tickets for the movie for Hard Day's Night. You know the part I love about this the most? Believe it or not, in 1964, those haircuts were risque. How much you want for them? I'm looking for $800 for the pair. They were printed only for that show, and I believe there are no other tickets around like them. So my friend Warwick, who is the curator at the Hard Rock Hotel here in Vegas, is coming down to take a look. Hi. How are you doing? Well, this is one of my favorite movies. This is the Beatles. Do you think these are real? Well, let me take a quick look at them. Now, obviously, what's so great about this is the condition. So you think they're 100% legit? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, no question about it. So how much are they worth? Uh, $350 to $400 a piece. Well, thanks, man. Hey, anytime. OK, $800, it's not going to make anything. OK, if you want 400 bucks for them, that's what I can do. I'll tell you, I think a fair price then would be you still make a profit on it at about six fifty. No, that's no, you no, still no, make no. plenty of profit on it. No, it's not. No, it's not. If you want four fifty, I'll go four fifty. Six. The thing is with the Beatles, there's a billion unique Beatles things. Do five fifty, and we have a deal. Nope. Five and a quarter. Nope. I'll go five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks is a fair price. Okay, deal. All right. I feel OK about my final deal. I'll probably wind up uh, taking my daughter out to dinner tonight. What do we have here? I actually got one of the most important documents in rock and roll history. The contract between Brian Epstein, who was the manager, and the Beatles creating the partnership between the two of them. You have the original Beatles contract. Yep. This is the holy grail of rock and roll. It's an agreement between Brian and the Beatles, basically giving him 25% of all royalties. And the agreement basically states what Brian Epstein's cut would be. Brian Epstein was a genius. He basically transformed the Beatles from an unknown band playing small clubs into the biggest rock band ever. When he died, he couldn't be replaced, and it played a large role in the Beatles breaking up. Okay, how much do you want for it? A million dollars. Um, I'm going to call my guy. I just want to make sure that everything is 100% cool before we start talking price. The contract is well known throughout the Beatles' collectible world. It was one of the most significant contracts in the history of rock and roll. It's a thing of legend. I can't wait to get my hands on it and really take a look at it in person. We have some really early signatures of the Beatles. So what I've done here is I've tried to pull out some super early stuff that I have on file. There's no question that this is genuine. I'd put the value of this piece right at around $500,000. It was awesome to see the piece in person. I mean, it's a great piece of rock and roll history. It's probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I mean, you're not going to like my price. I mean, I pay like $350 for it. You know, I have to look at it. I, I think I can probably get a half million dollars for it. You know what? That's, that's an 
incredible offer, but I'm really gonna have to stick to a million dollars. I could probably take it to one of the major auction houses tomorrow, and I really believe that I could probably get a million dollar reserve on this. Um, okay, you take the risk. I would go 350, that's cash right now. If you don't take that, I would wait for another auction. Um, I'm gonna have to decline in the 350. Good luck with it. I appreciate it, thanks very much. I'm disappointed I couldn't make a deal. I really wanted to sell it today, but I really had to find the right buyer. Today just wasn't it. Mr. Brown and I got along famously. <laughs> Why he tittled through a pass? I caught the ball myself. It's got a name engraved on it. How did you end up with this? Sounds so fun.